Good morning and uh, good day from Australia. Uh, my name is uh, Vinod Tiwari and I'm the Global Head of Business Development for PowerLedger based out of uh, Perth in Australia. Great to be here in your company. Uh, today I'm talking about uh, uh, blockchain technology and how it is supporting renewables trading and enhancing grid resiliency. And in particular, I'll be talking about one specific use case that is uh, in ASEAN, in uh, the city of Bangkok, in Thailand, uh, uh, it's called T77 Smart Precinct. So we'll look at that case study and, uh, uh, and uh, try and uh, prove the hypothesis that we're talking about. Uh, so next slide, slide please. Uh, just a little bit about ourselves quickly. Uh, Powell Ledger, uh, headquartered in Australia. Uh, we started off five years ago uh, with one proof of concept here in Western Australia. Now we have presence in 10 plus countries, uh, 25 plus projects, uh, uh, and uh, the company was recognized and uh, has won several awards, including uh, Sir Richard Branson's uh, Extreme Tech Challenge in 2018. In 2019, we were invited to present uh, uh, to US Congress uh, for a Congressional uh, Blockchain Caucus uh, on energy use cases, uh, blockchain enabled energy use cases. So yeah, it's been an amazing journey so far uh, and great to be sharing part of our uh, project journey uh, to use the case study on uh, T77 today with you. Uh, so if you move next, please. Uh, what do we do? Uh, so we firmly believe that uh, the energy markets uh, or energy grid is uh, as good, uh, only as good as the markets that sit, sit behind, it, uh, behind it. So our technology enables spinning off of marketplaces. We use blockchain as the core technology uh, to offer uh, tracking and trading of energy. Uh, so again, spinning off marketplaces for trading of energy, for grid flexibility services, uh, for the better functioning of grid, uh, and also enabling uh, buying and selling in an efficient way of renewable energy certificates. So marketplace for renewable, renewable energy certificates or environmental commodities. And we have a whole range of uh, applications of features uh, that uh, hang off our single platform, which is scalable, uh, and uh, um, you know all these features, uh, U grid, X grid, uh, uh, they have specific applications. Uh, so for example, peer-to-peer -peer energy marketplace behind the meter is U grid, across the grid uh, is X grid, and then the grid resiliency functions uh, like marketplace for optimization of distributed energy or VPP or local energy markets, uh, uh, and then the simple vision of energy itself, uh, which provides a choice to uh, consumers as well. So uh, some of the projects, uh, one in particular in, uh, in France is, is about uh, uh, choosing, uh, consumers Consumers can choose the energy mix, uh, the type of renewable energy that they want and the location that they want from using this vision feature. So I'll move on from here. Um, next, please. Um, and, uh, and we've, uh, over these uh, five years, partnered with some of the largest companies, global companies around the world. Um, some of the projects are actually in ASEAN as well, uh, in Thailand, uh, Malaysia, uh, and of course in, uh, in India and in Japan, uh, and in Australia, we are headquartered here. So APAC is our sort of uh, uh, key zone, but we also in four countries in Europe and also on East and West Coast of the United States as well. Uh, next, please. So uh, the focus today is uh, more on uh, T77 project, which I'll be displaying uh, uh, as a case study. Uh, so if we move on to the next slide, please. Uh, this is what it looks like uh, in the heart of uh, Bangkok City, T77 Sukhumvit precinct has uh, multiple um, buildings, uh, commercial customers primarily who are participating in this uh, peer-to-peer -peer energy trading uh, project, which is uh, operating under sandbox, regulatory sandbox. And first of its kind, it's received very high level of visibility and I'll talk a little bit more about it. Uh, there are multiple uh, participants in this. Uh, uh, of course, the key players being, uh, if we uh, go next, please. Uh, this this uh, video will actually explain uh, all the participants, there is a habit of shopping mall, there's an international school, a dental hospital, and the park court condominium, which are participating in this. Uh, the project itself, uh, BCPG, uh, Sanseri, and Power Ledger are the key partners and uh, supported by Metropolitan Electricity Authorities Grid. 
So if I could request uh, uh, Energy trading trial project the playing of the video, please. Uh, in two and a half minutes, it explains what's going on. Yeah. CPG and Power Ledger. The project comprises four participating entities with an energy storage system connected to the grid of the Metropolitan Electricity Authority, or MEA. All entities have different energy consumption patterns and solar power generation capacity. Electricity demand at Habito Mall peaks during the day every day. Bangkok Prep International School has a large area for solar panel installation with diverse electricity demand patterns. At Park Court Condominium, electricity demand varies throughout the day. For example, low demand during daytime. Dental Hospital has high demand in daytime but has some constraints in solar panels installation. Hence, they have joined the project as a buyer. The electricity produced from each entity will be initially used within the building so that residents can have lower energy costs. Trading occurs as a result of different load profiles of each entity. Excess energy is sold to other entities through P2P energy trading system. If there's an energy surplus from all four entities, it will be sold to Energy Storage System, or ESS. If the ESS is full, excess electricity can be sold to the grid through MEA network in the future. If all four buildings consume more than they can produce, trading is done from P2P, ESS and MEA respectively. Some entities have excess energy, while others are short of electricity. Those with demand will buy from those with excess energy at the lowest price possible. Sellers will sell their electricity to buyers with the highest offer. All entities can act as buyers and sellers. This is impossible without the use of blockchain technology which helps determine the transaction in a split second using an application which is available both on computer and mobile phone. Transactions can be done in real time, making anyone a producer of electricity from clean energy and enable cost control at their fingertips. Democratization of power, giving power back to the people. Thank you. Uh, if you could move on to the next slide, uh, please. Yeah, so hopefully uh, it gave you a clear idea of uh, what is the physical infrastructure uh, over there uh, at T77. So there's rooftop solar on multiple buildings except uh, the dental hospital. Uh, the buildings are procuring energy uh, from uh, rooftop solar as their, their first go-to uh, energy um, source. And if they have excess, they're not using that excess, they're able to trade peer-to-peer -peer with other buildings. So if we go to the next slide, please. This gives a very clear uh, uh, detail of uh, how each building uh, over uh, this, uh, this period uh, in, in 2020, for example, uh, have fared. So Habito have uh, the largest load, they are the biggest buyer uh, user of energy. They're buying primarily from the grid, from MEA but uh, they're also importing peer-to-peer -peer from uh, some of their peers. Uh, and uh, every now and then they have uh, um, energy that, that's coming from their renewable allocation from the solar generation. Uh, likewise, uh, um, the school, uh, now school is, uh, uh, is, is uh, buying quite a bit from grid, but uh, they're also able to use a lot of energy from their rooftop uh, because they have massive roof space. Uh, and they're able to get a bigger share of energy renewable allocation from their roof space. And they also on weekends have a lot of spare energy that they're able to trade and monetize by sharing trading it with other buildings. So peer-to-peer -peer export. Uh, Parkour is uh, buying from grid as well as peer-to-peer -peer import. And then from for a few intervals every, every few months, they have some excess energy that they're able to export, but they're also buying quite a bit from their renewable allocation. So what this is actually showing in dental hospitals is primarily buying from grid or peer-to-peer -peer import. So without peer-to-peer, -peer, their savings would have been 
much lesser number. Uh, of course, uh, they have renewable uh, on the rooftop, so uh, and and that is priced. Uh, that energy is priced cheaper than the grid price, so they get cheaper clean energy from their rooftop solar. But their fact that they're able to sell their excess energy when they they don't use uh, from their rooftop solar, uh, they're able to monetize their share and and actually get this additional delta. So you can see here uh, what peer-to-peer -peer has actually resulted in additional value creation for the participants. Next, please. Um, and this has been a huge uh, uh, project for uh, from regulatory perspective. So multiple regulatory agencies, uh, as you can see Energy Regulatory Commission, uh, uh, the Ministry of Energy itself, uh, PEA, MEA have all been learning uh, from the sandbox. And this has resulted in uh, decision on multiple uh, sandbox in Thailand. Uh, and uh, not only in Thailand, but uh, Malaysia looked at it and did their own uh, national pilot as well. And uh, now it is uh, incentivized or uh, um, got other countries interested as well. Projects in India came out uh, from, the, uh, from the visibility of this project. So this has become a huge project from that perspective. Very quickly moving on, next please. Uh, so uh, we've sort of already covered that it allowed peer-to-peer -peer energy trading, uh, uh, cheaper, cleaner uh, energy um, available to the participants and uh, uh, monetizing their share. Uh, there are also issues around uh, VAT and uh, how the billing will work, uh, how billing will integrate with uh, uh, the MEA's billing system, for example, uh, and the use of uh, uh, crypt cryptographic token as a, uh, as a uh, as a, uh, sort of a license to use the platform itself. Uh, so if you move next, please, uh, the project is uh, uh, actually, uh, these were some of the benefits uh, that I already talked about. Uh, the project had PPA tracking, peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer energy trading, matching of energy generation and consumption. Uh, and we were able to con configure a specific trading logic for the, uh, for the project itself. Uh, screenshot of the project on the right-hand side. Next, please. Uh, the project is expanding, uh, other buildings joining this project as well. This will become a 1200 kilowatt project uh, with multiple, uh, uh, think about uh, another 500 kilowatt to be added on uh, onto the existing uh, project. Next, please. Uh, and likewise, uh, uh, it has triggered, uh, of course, the visibility of the projects uh, generated other projects. Uh, Chiang Mai University is uh, doing a much larger project uh, in the university campus in Chiang Mai. Next, please. Uh, which will have uh, uh, 12 megawatt of uh, rooftop solar across multiple buildings, 10 megawatts already installed. Uh, next, please. Uh, and the project is targeted, uh, uh, you know, creating peer-to-peer -peer energy trading uh, as well as, uh, next, please, if we can, I think that slide shows better, peer-to-peer -peer, um, energy management, vehicle to grid. There will be also um, large battery, 1.2 megawatt that will support the resiliency of the grid as well. So uh, T77 has become uh, a huge uh, driver of uh, uh, how DERs can really support cheaper, cleaner energy and uh, uh, resiliency of the grid as well through creating creation of local energy market. And that local energy market is what this slide is talking about. But if you can, if you split the, um, the energy market structure, then of course you have the trading of energy at the wholesale electricity market level. Uh, that is layer four. Uh, when you have Lots of renewable in uh, the distribution transmission network start to require flexibility services that come from aggregator retailers who offer these great flexibility services through virtual power plant or aggregation of battery, et cetera. Um, electric vehicles participate in that as well, or demand side response as well from layer one. But layer two is, uh, is about created through peer-to-peer -peer energy trading network, uh, very similar to what T77 is doing. Uh, but with a much more dynamic involvement of uh, distribution network. And if you go to next place, this slide uh, will show. Uh, typically, when you have a lot of uh, renewable on the grid, then there are reverse flows and it causes other issues for grid operator like voltage imbalances or reactive power management itself. Uh, so this example shows here, uh, the congestion happens in this case here at the red sector with two kilowatt uh, as over tolerance uh, for four hours uh, every day. Uh, this could mean uh, the in infrastructure will need to be uh, upgraded. So there's, this will probably require uh, capital expense. If you go next, please. So how peer-to-peer -peer can benefit is uh, 
This congestion is relieved uh, if there is uh, extra two kilowatt is bought or consumed under a flexible scheme. So this could mean that deferment of uh, major infrastructure spend simply by providing price signal to consumers um, who might use their excess energy within that local uh, network. So matching the supply and demand so that the, uh, the reverse flows could be uh, reduced, congestion could be reduced and infrastructure doesn't need to be upgraded. So if you go next, please, uh, I'm, I'm coming to uh, my allocated time. Uh, what this says that uh, uh, using power ledger software, peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, local energy market, enabling grid flexibility services, renewables can be scaled in an orderly way. Uh, T77 is a huge project uh, step forward in demonstrating how all of that can be done. Uh, we're very uh, proud to be associated with that project uh, in partnership with Metropolitan Electricity Authority, BCPG, and Sensory. Uh, Thailand is uh, literally leading the way in that space, and the Regulatory Commission, with its uh, whole range of sandbox trials that are currently in place, will come up with regulations uh, that will be meaningful in this, this space. Uh, so with that, uh, I come to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for joining me for this talk. Uh, hopefully you found it useful uh, and uh, I will be available for any question and answers. Thank you very much again.